PhD is an adventure, an odyssey into knowledge for which you must prepare. If you want tips, news, and a little humor about the PhD and about career readiness, that's what I bring you every two weeks here on PhD Dojo. News, tips, grad school stories, listener questions. Here you'll find everything to be a black belt at the PhD and beyond. Welcome to the dojo. And we are live for a new PhD dojo. Hey, God, how are you? Very good, and you? Very good, very good. So today, what's the topic? <laughs> you want to introduce it? Uh, I can introduce it a little bit. It's something I struggled with during my PhD for sure. And uh, and it, it sounds, it may sound like one dimensional when you say it and and we're talking about time management during your phd uh and in general but it's so much more than than just you know having a schedule and having a a, a spreadsheet with uh, allotted times because it's something that that can affect your life in many many ways and that can be more challenging for more, for one person than the than the next so yeah i'm super excited to to talk about this especially like i said because it is something that I, I remember struggling with this this question of time management. Yeah, I I struggled too with this time management because uh, I, I was the kind of people who saying uh, yes to everything uh, when I was <laughs> uh, I was during my PhD, and uh, maybe maybe uh, a lot of us are like this. Like uh, we are we are interested, very curious about many things, and we like to do many things. Um, yeah, we uh, we have to manage time, and at some point, you're just like finding you have too much do- job that you have accepted, mm-hmm. and you're not able to deliver at time. So uh, it's mm. uh, could be very complicated. So I will after my PhD, I read some books, and mm-hmm. what what we t- we talk we, we will talk today are everything are in books. Um, and the first things that I found and that just blow my mind is you don't have to manage your time. You have to manage your energy. Hmm. I find that so, so interesting because when I was saying that it's not one dimensional, I, you know, I was thinking that time and how we perceive time and how we perceive our scarcity of time, uh, affects our, our, uh, anxiety, uh, our mental health in general, and uh, eventually can can affect our 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 health in general and th- that's what i was saying and the fact that you connected with energy makes a lot of sense to me can you uh, expand a little bit on that yeah exactly so when you were 18 18 you know you mm-hmm. you were you were a teenager or uh, let's say below 25 i mean you have full of energy you can work <laughs> full time for 60 hours nonstop and nobody i mean nothing can can you don't have many problem with that, but uh, after 25, 30, uh, you just like, at some point you get tired of working. Um, a lot of people in graduate studies told me like they work more than 50 hours. Uh, and there's a, a scientific paper saying like, nobody can work more than 50 hours because I mean, productively or effectively, because it's, we we not we not machines you know mm-hmm. we not uh, we cannot um, like the you know you, do you remember this advertisement where you have a rabbit uh, with uh, mm-hmm. yeah the energizer or in, in, in Europe is in yeah, Europe it's, it's Duracell in Duracell exactly in Europe it's Duracell but <laughs> we we not like that we cannot um, cannot have symbols and uh, clap symbols. For hours and hours, <laughs> yeah. no. uh, without being being exhausted at, at some point. So, uh, and even if we are doing like um, intellectual work, we cannot work all that time. So we have to do some breaks because we have to restore our energy. So, so what? And and everybody can feel it during the day. We all have our um, energy. We have one en- energy peak during the day. That lasts maybe one hour, two hours. Um, I I can tell you that for me it's between eleven, um, let's say let's say ten thirty and let's say twelve one. Sometimes a little bit more because uh, um, 
I'm uh, kind of uh, what I, I'm seeing all the time, all diesel, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all diesel and giant. So uh, I struggle to wake up in the morning and uh, I, I start to be very effective in the middle of uh, the the morning. So, okay. but, you know, this is, you have also like the, you know, some people are what we call the, the owl, like the night owl, and some people are early birds. Yes. And, and that's true. And in per, preparing the, the topic, I was just seeing what, what it comes from. And it seems that it's, there's a part of genetics behind that okay. and also education. Uh, but we all have an energy peak somewhere uh, in, the, in the day. Uh, and um, you have to discover when, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For me, I, I'd say I'd, I, I'm more of a night owl, although uh, things change and having 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 kids and everything has kind of changed that somehow. But naturally, uh, at that you know when I was doing my PhD, I think that was that was it. I was able, I was always able to work late late at night mm-hmm. better than you know starting early in the morning. And I think it's kind of swapped now in, in, in now at at, yeah. uh, at this stage of my life. But 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 that's where I remember. Um, it's interesting that that you're talking about about that about knowing your cycle because we're, we're people, you know, we're made made of habits. Uh, but also, there's a physiology to it that's uh, particular to each person. So you you need to mm-hmm. know when these peaks are. I'm interested to. I, I imagine. You're gonna you're gonna talk something about how to capitalize on on knowing that, yeah. but um, this is interesting because in a few weeks I'll be talking with uh, a guest. Um, her name is Özgün Un- Özgün Unver, and uh, about um, uh, burnout and mm-hmm. one of the dangers of over uh, uh, over uh, expending your energies is burnout. But like I said, it's going to be the team the, the subject of a full episode. But uh, if you if you're listening and if you have issues ty- with time management, burnout is a danger. So this is why we're talking about this today. Yeah, and uh, curiously, when yeah, burnout is just like you overwork, you work just work, and you don't reload your energy. You wake up in the morning and just like burned. You and, have uh, yeah. five twenty percent of the battery. <laughs> yeah, and you have to do it the day with it. So uh, and <laughs> and burnout means like you burn like. You burn new energy, and which is interesting is in physics, uh, energy is in joules, um, and work is in joules as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I think energy makes sense. Um, and the thing is, how how to not be burned out um, is to reload their energy with cool stuff like outside of work. Mm-hmm. Taking some breaks first, um, having a physical, it's, it's very basic. It seems very obvious, uh, physical activities, uh, hanging some with some friends, have social, uh, social interactions, um, have, uh, also like, um, make it you in PhDs, we, we just like working the brain all the time. Uh, sometimes you have to stop and doing something else with your brain. So watching mm-hmm. movies, reading books, uh, very good. And also spir- spiritually, like you can make some, some people making yoga. This is not my stuff, but, uh, but, uh, you can have like a power nap, uh, meditations, mm-hmm. things like that. So, mm-hmm. so there's many waves like, uh, this is some in another book that I, I, I saw this, these things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's a way to reload their energy you can during the day, during the day or during the weekend, or that's the reasons why we, we don't work like, uh, mm-hmm. how employers ask us to work 35 hours a week because, mm-hmm. um, or, or even more like 40 hours a week, but no more because at some point you're not productive, you burned. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the quality of, of what you bring is not good anymore. Now, one thing mm-hmm. I remember feeling during my PhD, especially, you know, third year, fourth year, you know, uh, starting at the middle was having, and especially because I was having like to troubleshoot stuff and things weren't working and I needed, I had, mm-hmm. I, I, I was seeing the end of the PhD arrive and, and there were, there was some pressure there, some anxiety and the, the, um, the instinct or, or the, what was happening was that I was 
looking at my schedule and thinking and also getting this messaging from outside that all the time that I see, all the time slots that I see here mm-hmm. free on my agenda of the week, I need to fill them with PhD. And yeah. what you're saying is, if you do that, you're just expanding, expanding, expanding this battery and never recharging. So it fe- it feels to me like you need to have these these like two colors. Let's say uh, cold colors is uh, recharging, and then uh, warm colors is work. And there needs to be a mix of that during yeah. your day or or during your week as a mm-hmm. as a graduate student. Yeah, so uh, I will come. I will come later with another concept. Uh, but, but yes, you have to you have to find some space in your schedule just to reload your energy. Uh, as you said, like you can have two colors, you can have uh, can you can have different times. And uh, when somebody asks you, like, like you know, in my in my schedule, uh, personally, I have some space to write where I refuse to get to to get meetings. Mm-hmm. Because I need I need to produce documents in my in my job, and I need some space to write. And I'm I'm taking the moment where I have full of energy for some days and during the week, just to write. I'm not checking my emails. I'm just I'm just writing. Mm-hmm. And there's other space uh, for meetings, and I'm not playing. I'm. I used to plan meetings during the the, the during the afternoon. So mm-hmm. because I I know myself and I know where I can be better at meetings, and uh, w- yeah. So so if I if I have to decide it, this is this is what I'm doing. So mm-hmm. just to come back on that, like there's an exercise that I'm suggesting for that. So okay, we, we've talked about peak of energy and how to discover when it is. Yes. Just like probe your energy during the day. So you wake up in the morning and you start to count, like, how am I feeling? So uh, um, I, I'm feeling very well. So I can put like a between zero and 10, a, a level of energy, like seven. Okay. Good. Um, the next hour, what's going on? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm at five. <laughs> okay. The, the The hour later, okay, I'm at eight. So you can... You can uh, you can do it during all the day. You do it during during three days. You wait one week and doing do it do it during three days, and you have stats. So you can you can have a standard deviation and 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 an average. So and usually what what's coming is you can have a Gaussian curve like like this. It's it, and you have your peak of energy at some point. So you have a Gaussian curve. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you can go beyond that, so you can write on the paper uh, with the numbers like I have five because uh, well uh, uh, I talked to my colleague and he, he, he gave me a bite, bad news about my experiments or something like that. You know? Okay. So you can do that. Try to have some uh, like uh, stats, and you can trace the curve and and you know exactly more or less where your energy peak is, mm-hmm. and you can. You can you you can leverage that and mm. organize your time from from that. I love it. It's the the scientific yeah. met- method. It's perfect that, for our that's audience. The, exactly, <laughs> that's the scientific <laughs> method. So, so if you have like a, a very important to, uh, important things to do de- to do during the day, do it during your peak of, of energy, like during the day, because you know that it's it's ten a.m. or nine nine a.m. Do it at nine a.m. Papa PhD is supported by Noted Source, the platform connecting academic researchers to companies for project-based opportunities across disciplines, from sciences to arts and humanities. Top corporate innovation teams work with academia, but the smartest ones use Noted Source to discover and collaborate with experts like you. Easily sign up today at papaphd.com forward slash Noted Source. Using Google Scholar and Orchid Imports, it only takes a few minutes to create a professional profile that lets clients know you're open to collaboration. Noted Source handles the bureaucracy so you can focus on what you know best. That's papaphd.com forward slash Noted Source.
I love this, a scientific method of, okay, identifying your peak. Of course, this is going to be an approximate thing. And then leaving or trying to, to uh, schedule the most energy-consuming activities, let's say, for you for that part of the day. And then the ones that, that are more that are easier for you or less energy consuming for the uh, <laughs> either before or after. That's yeah. super interesting. Of course, of course, this is this is something where uh, you you're the only person to work with. You don't work with others. That's very mm -hmm. ideal. Um, but uh, of course, uh, you work with others. So uh, so so you have to adapt yourself with the the others. But uh, But if you have to work by yourself and decide how you want to manage your time, mm -hmm. it's a good exercise and it's a good plan. Yeah. Uh, but of course, you have to adapt with others who are better to work in the morning or I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, th but, I yeah. think the message is not a rigidity about what you do and when, but it's having having this uh, this information allows you to, when there's a choice, to place things there, to be strategic about it. No, no, exactly, I, I, totally, exactly. I totally understand. One thing you're making me think about is because here we're, we're talking about the day, right? Starting mm -hmm. in the morning and then finding where your peak is, etc. But um, I feel, especially you know, some uh, some activities. I remember for 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 me, I had to spend hours at in the dark at at the microscope counting cells. And there's also uh, something that that uh, I didn't remember existing while I was in the PhD, but now is fairly known. Which is the Pomodoro method? Is it something that that you've heard yeah. about? Yeah, yeah, that that was my next point actually. Oh, you, okay. You just read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to explain? I can explain. Actually, it's funny yeah. because uh, people have asked me why Pomodoro, and I've, I've I've explained this a couple of times. You know, depending on on uh, how much you were attentive to the kitchen in your house growing up, you might have seen a little tomato that that uh, your your mom or the person cooking your dad, whoever, would turn to count the minutes for a specific uh, step of, a, of a, a cooking protocol, let's say, like cooking, uh, cooking eggs or baking this or baking that. And that tomato, and, and, and at a certain point, I remember there was one of those at my house, and I think at a certain point, the people who, who uh, were selling those or, or, or making those were making tomatoes. I don't know. There was a fashion about it, and a tomato in Italian is pomodoro. And the idea is to have this type of thing uh, to have a set amount of minutes that you are focusing. So you would you would virtually because you can do this on websites or even on your on your phone. You would put a timer for let's say twenty twenty five minutes, and and you say okay, I'll focus during this time. Then when it beeps, it's a break, and I have I set another another timer for five minutes of whatever energizes me or relaxes me and then i pick up again um i don't know if, if you had if you have anything to add to that but it, it's as simple as that yeah and uh and actually uh yeah it's it's, it's as simple as, as that you know you you plan just one tomato or two tomatoes in a row and mm -hmm. uh and you you break like the i, I think it's five minutes or ten minutes if you, if you and the tomato is 25 minutes something um, like that yes Something like that, and um, yeah, very cool. Uh, this is exactly this is exactly the energy problem. So mm -hmm. you, you you use your energy, you reload your energy because you're doing a break, drinking a coffee, or or, or standing up, whatever. And, yeah, and doing like that, and, um, and it's so simple. It is so simple, and it works. It's very very simple. Yeah, exactly. And then you, you do something rewarding in the in the middle. We have actually Ibrahim asking a question. Let's let's look at it, Gad. Yeah, go on, Ibrahim. I have a question. Let's say that a PhD decides to work 40 hours a week. Is it worth it to track the time you're really working on every task? I say that because sometimes we're in the lab 12 hours a day, but we really work probably not more than five hours. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's touching kind of a, on a point that we didn't mention it like that, but but what you said points to it, which is if you have set an, an objective of this many hours uh, uninterrupted, part of those hours, maybe half of those hours, will be unproductive, which I think is is more or less what what Ibrahim is alluding mm -hmm. to. Um, so yeah, is it useful to set 
a, a hard objective of hours per week. What's your take on that, Gad? I, I don't think we need we need to be crazy with the with the time that we're doing. Like uh, like if it's forty hours, it's forty hours. We just like we have to be ad adaptable. And there is uh, you know you plan your day, and at some point you have uh, an emergency that coming, and especially uh, in a lab that always happens, and spe especially also in a in a biology lab, uh, there's always emergencies like. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, but no, don't set hard time to yourself. Uh, don't be too hard to, with yourself. But um, um, sometimes you have to to be flexible with yourself. So, mm -hmm. and it really depends also of you know. Um, it happens that I'm working uh, late at night, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, but I'm full of energy because I just uh, got a good diner or. Mm -hmm. I I met somebody that make me laugh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you know I don't know, and um, yeah, you don't have to to be crazy with that, uh, but uh, I, I really recommend to you know know yourself better, to just to just like figure out when it's the good moment to stop mm -hmm. or to continue. Yeah, again, it's interesting because this is connecting to an, a conversation that I'm having tomorrow with Kimberly Duong, which is goal setting. I think it's much oh, yeah. more interesting to set goals for your week, yeah. set goals for the week versus time. Because if you set a time for the week and then you you feel that uh, you either you run out of steam or uh, you run out of work, and and now there's a you know you you're you, you're not reaching that objective, I think it's going to be a source of bad feelings towards yourself and towards your performance plus it can, it can also make you you know bring you to find reasons to stay at lab when actually that week your productivity mm -hmm. what, what you could be productive in is done and you could then go and go recharge like you said yeah, so exactly. ibrahim uh i really think setting a, a, a sol like a, a definite amount of hours can be counterproductive of course um It depends, you know, in some in some labs, there's a culture and there's a messaging to be there, you know, to to give to have a FaceTime there. And I don't think it's it's the right way to go. But I believe, you know, in, in a lot of conversations I've had and even during my PhD that PIs, you know, whoever's supervising you wants results. So if you set goals, uh, there's going to be a week where you're going to do, I don't know, 55. And then there's another week where you can... You know, you can uh, reach your goals and uh, and then maybe have an extend, you know, ex extend goals if you reach that goal. I think that's much, much more productive. It's it's much it can be much more rewarding and less conducive to uh, feelings of, uh, uh, you know, feel failure or not, you know, not being good enough or not having uh, given enough. Um, mm -hmm. That's my feeling about it. Yeah. And um, yeah, exactly. And about goals, like uh, your goals should be smart. <laughs> you know this, yes. this, this acronym. <laughs> uh, you, you can verify, but I think it's smart. It's um, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bounded. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. not that bad. So yeah, Good. this is uh, this is this. So when you plan a goal, like it should be a smart goal. Mm -hmm. um, It's just, it's just stuff that everybody, and not everybody, like many people in industry use these days to plan. Um, the other thing is the challenge that, especially if you are in biology or everything in biotech, you have an experiment that lasts maybe uh, 10 hours, 20 yes. hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just, I just, um, I don't think that we should work alone on these experiments. We should be like two or three mm -hmm. uh, working on the same experiment as a team because um, after five hours, it's just like exhausted. Yeah, Five five hours under the hood, you're exhausted. Yeah. And somebody can, can take over it and continue the experiment. I think it could be yeah. a, a good uh, a good thing. Um, or if, if you're really the only person who can do that, then if you if you have to do this, day of 12 hours or whatever then give yourself the space on the next day the liberty to to say okay tomorrow the morning i'll take it to recharge and then i'll go, i'll come back to lab <laughs> at 12 
the world is not going to end because I wasn't there at 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. Okay, we've discussed about time management in the short term, but uh, mm -hmm. what do you think about long term? Like, I have to manage time like for a month, a year, two years. That's, I don't... that's an even harder exercise. Although, I think it was yeah. important to talk about the short term because it's what people deal with every day. Yeah. And I, I think we've made a good point of... Uh, Yes, using time to to uh, to do the Pomodoro, for example, but uh, think more. You know, be more goal oriented, uh, and and you know if, when you're actually thinking of your week. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, when if you're thinking about a semester or a year or your or your your PhD, it becomes more and more difficult. What, what did you? What have you read about that? Uh, not i mean uh, i think it's very hard uh, or, or what what time. reflections what reflections do you have yeah reflections uh i mean smart goals is a very good thing like mm -hmm. uh if you have to plan a goal just plan a goal like uh i have to do it in the next two years and what you i think you have to, a goal could be very um difficult to reach when you you design it like this so you mm -hmm. you have the goal It seems a big goal, so I think you just have to cut your task in very sub task, mm -hmm. and this is how you organize yourself. So, let's say, uh, well, uh, in the next five years, I will finish my PhD, <laughs> so that that could be the task. Be uh, the first one, okay, yeah. <laughs> being being like specific, measurable, etc. Uh, how I can divide it to small task, and if these tasks are not cut it enough you know you cut enough you just just cut it in sub sub task mm -hmm. and this is where you can organize yourself and reach the goals at the end bring the resource with you like it's it's like project management like you yeah you bring the results with you what what kind of your resource do you need to to do your task i think this is a and then when you have this to-do list Because it's a it's a to do list. When you have this to do list, just put it in a calendar. Uh, use uh, the Pomodoro, the peak energy, mm -hmm. and all that things. So I, I think yeah. this is a, this is a I good love, way to do it. I really love it. One one exercise that I've uh, done actually in the last year that I found really interesting and that I think can be useful for this is uh, I don't know if you've done this in any uh, set in any setting the lifeline uh, exercise. And okay. of course, you know, I've done it looking at the past, what's what's happened since, let's say, 2010, this, 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 this. But I think that because using a calendar for that can be, if if you're <laughs> planning for something in, in five years, it can be challenging to use a calendar for that, in my opinion. But if you go on, um, you know, Canva or, or, or let's say, uh, uh, Excel or, or, or even just PowerPoint, and you make a line of what you think your PhD will last five years, Year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, and then you start placing things there. Starting to write my thesis, turn in my thesis, uh, different uh, exams that you might have, and then, uh, like you said, going more and more granular. Of course, things that are farther away, it takes time before you can get granular. Mm -hmm. But things that are six months away, then you the, you can, like you say, cut thing. You know, cut that big bucket into smaller and smaller things. Mm -hmm. That that would be the thing that I would add to what you said because I'm visual mm -hmm. and and. A lot. Well, we're all visual, but for me yeah. to be able to, in one go, see all of it is is very, very helpful. And anything that's really far away, I tend my you know my brain tends to not think about it and forget about it. But uh, I, I I do agree, and uh, that that going back, if I had in like the first year sat down with someone, or if someone had sat down with me and say, okay, let's look at your next six years, and let's place things there, I think I would have had a better experience. It could have only helped me go through the experience of the PhD, and so so I recommend it to anyone out there. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, we're we're kind of like juggling with these ideas live here. If you have any questions and want uh, you know to discuss it more, just talk to Gad uh, on LinkedIn or to me, uh, or leave a comment on YouTube even, and uh, we'll be glad to discuss it. But I, it's a really great point. I'm really happy that you brought it because very very often when you talk about time management it stops at the pomodoro and the journaling and etc and mm -hmm. i think this idea of strategically thinking years ahead is very important M yeah. months ahead but also years ahead yeah that's that's really uh, when we talk about management this is exactly this so you have to mm -hmm. 
break down the task, what kind of resource do you need, what, how much time do you need to do each task. And we all know that it, the life is not a straight line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's not straight. It, you have, a, you know, we, we plan like a line, but we know that everything it's like this. So you are mm-hmm. just coming back and you do, you have found something. So, so uh, yeah, you, you your planning is a line, but uh, you have to deal with uh, un- uncertainty sometimes, and uh, and somebody can be sick, a resource can be not available at some days. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, we have to be flexible with the uh, with the the project as well. And bring this yes. flexibility in your planning as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Because time is—it feels like each second that you know you, you see the hands of the of the, the clock go, mm-hmm. and it's it's a very finite, a very final thing. But but planning, like you said, you need to give yourself flexibility. If you're rigid, then you're going to suffer each time there's a change in plans, mm-hmm. and there will be changes in plans during a PhD. Now, one thing that I that I'd like to mention, you kind of alluded to it by saying that uh, you know long projects should should be uh, there should be multiple people involved so if there's mm-hmm. a 10 hour protocol that you can that you can share and one thing that i that i um, would like to propose and i'd like to to have your feedback on that gad is that on your life or on that lifeline of your phd that you also put the people that are going to be important at different points because um, it can be the tendency can be to oh it's my phd I'll you know I'll go it alone and I think it's it's better that you have if you have mentors if you have co- people who can counsel you who can help you with writing um and and to identify these people around you and um and also put them there oh at this stage I should talk with also like I should have a committee meeting for example uh but I should talk with someone about writing about thesis writing yeah. or etc et what what do you think about that and this, yeah, this would the- be almost <laughs> the last the last question yeah exactly um because it could be a, a topic by itself so <laughs> and yes so, <laughs> yeah. uh, so what, what what i'm saying to my colleague at the second lab is we don't work alone never on any mm-hmm. task because uh, it could be very difficult to work alone first um and uh, i mean be- teamwork is better so, always um the the other thing is is as PhDs we have a problem to ask help. Uh, I mean, I mean, a lot of PhDs have a problem to ask help. And uh, why should I ne- doing information interview if you just ask help and understand something? Um, we so we should just have to force ourselves to ask help and. And never do the things alone. I think it's it's a principle. Of course, the PhD is made for being yours as an individual. I'm seeing uh, all, always the name of the professor at the lab because this is a, this is his lab or her lab. Um, I mean, div- individuality in academia is is very uh, prominent. Uh, we don't work for a company. We work for a lab owned by one one professor or two uh depends on the countries and things like that but but teamwork is so important uh because because being being two or three is always better than being just one on one task even if it's your phd you can just help each other's uh with the your i mean your and the other people task or burden, or any kind of experiments, it's better to do it by two or or by one. Of course, somebody will tell you, "Okay, uh, you didn't do the things alone." Yes, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a team player. That's that's how it works, you know. <laughs> yes, I, I agree totally. And and you're gonna help each other with the skills with your because different people have different strengths. Someone's good at making figures. Someone's good at uh, reviewing. Uh, at, you know. There's different things, and then also I'm thinking about the lab. Someone's better at this technique or that technique, uh, and and being a team player is something that's going to be helpful when you're having career conversations later on. Mm-hmm. Did you have anything more in mind, God? No, I think we I think we talked about a lot of cool things today. So uh, peak energy, Pomodoro, uh, how to plan short term, long term, uh, uh, making like. Uh, 
a lot of things like the smart goals. We talked a little bit about the smart goals. Mm-hmm. We came to team playing and, and work with others and calendars and things like that. So so I think we we talked about everything <laughs> in in 38 minutes. That was very efficient. <laughs> Ibrahim says that he would like to share uh, this uh, tool that I've heard of, Notion, uh, and that that it might help for planning. Uh, I would actually uh, ask uh, Ibrahim that maybe, and let's talk after you can. We can talk on LinkedIn or whatever. Uh, if you, do you want to come talk about how you use Notion uh, on the show? Uh, it'd be I think it'd be a great opportunity. It's something I've heard of. It's something some people love, and then some people not so much. So I I, I wonder mm-hmm. whether. It, it it has to do with how people's brains work, but uh, I you know I'd be glad to do an episode on that uh, and and sharing this tool uh, and and sharing especially not the tool it itself but how you're using it, Ibrahim. It'd be it'd be great. So uh, I'm I'm mm-hmm. extending this invitation to you right here live on on the show. Gad, this was great. I think to me at least it would have been useful to know some of these things when I was during when I was mm-hmm. going through my PhD. Again, if you're listening or watching and have more questions or uh, want to go deeper on one of uh, one or another of the things we shared, uh, Gad, I think you'll agree you're uh, open for people to reach out on LinkedIn. Same thing mm-hmm. for me. Yes, and for sure. uh, we're we're here to help. And uh, this is the dojo. The idea is that you put on a, a white belt and come practice with us. So feel free, you know, David at PapaPhD.com. Gad, what's the best place to reach out to you? I mean, uh, I have a, I have an email address, gad.sabatier at thesecondlab.com, or you can reach me out on LinkedIn. Perfect. All right, Gad, this was great. 40 minutes, like you said, short and sweet. Um, I wish everyone uh, a great end of the day. If you're listening later on, uh, thank you for listening and watching this uh, after we, we had the live. Super appreciated. Leave us a like, follow Papa PhD. Uh, and uh, and follow me on LinkedIn and Papa PhD on YouTube, and also the Second Lab. Yes, for sure. So you you, you can follow us on LinkedIn. We have uh, we have, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, our LinkedIn page. Uh, we share some advices, some news, some other things. Uh, if you want to do it more, we're looking for volunteers as well. So uh, if you want to volunteer for the Second Lab, it's pretty pretty open to us. Um, so uh, reach me out if you have any questions, if you have any uh, any thoughts. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. And see you on the next PhD Dojo. Bye, God. Bye. I have a little favor to ask of you. I'm planning improvements to the show, and getting to know you better will allow me to tailor those improvements to your preferences and to your needs. So please visit papaphd.com forward slash audience and fill in the audience survey that's there for you. Thank you for your help and for your time.